Today we're going to talk about some major news on Ohio's upcoming referendum, and I interview Fox LA anchor Alex Michelson about a third Trump indictment, whether Trump shows up to the debate, DeSantis overplaying his hand on the whole woke stuff, and why the economic wins aren't sticking for Democrats. I'm Brian Tyler Cohen, and you're watching No Lie. So we've got some good news out of Ohio. First off, pro-choice advocates submitted over 495,000 ballot signatures, meaning that there will be a proposal on the ballot in November to enshrine abortion rights in Ohio state constitution. And currently, for a constitutional amendment to be adopted in that state, the rule is that you need a simple majority, so 50% plus one vote. However, before November, on August 8th, Republicans in the Ohio legislature called a special election on the question of raising the threshold for amending the state constitution to 60%. And, uh, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to understand the link here. This was scientifically engineered by Republicans to prevent Ohioans from being able to enshrine abortion rights in the state constitution. And because the Ohio GOP just watched their neighbors in uh, deep red Kentucky and also swingy Michigan pass pro-choice ballot measures, not to mention the other deep red state of Kansas, clearly they're pulling out whatever hurdles they can to stop this from passing. But here's the good news, uh, aside from the fact that there were almost 100,000 more signatures than required to actually get this uh, amendment on the ballot. As of Friday, July 28th, so these numbers will be even higher when you actually uh, watch this, there were over 355,000 people who have voted early by mail and in person for the August 8th election. That's compared to about 288,000 overall voters who voted early in the May 22 primary election. And that is from Ohio reporter Andrew Tobias. And yes, we are comparing apples to oranges here. But remember, this is the only question on the ballot. And it's an August special election in an off-year cycle, and still it's getting more interest in early voting than the primary election got in midterms. That, that's a big deal, and, and a few things to note here. Um, early voting is still happening all the way up to August 6th, and then in-person voting happens obviously on election day on August 8th. So while we might be seeing big numbers from early voting, Republicans who vote in person on election day uh, see those numbers too, and they're gonna turn out. So it's crucial here that people not let up and continue turning out. And by the way, when we've had these standalone elections with huge implications for abortion rights, they've gone Democrats' way, and the GOP knows that. Again, Kansas, a state that Trump won by 15 points, uh, rejected that constitutional amendment to ban abortion by a 20-point margin. In Wisconsin state Supreme Court race, liberal judge Janet Protasiewicz ran expressly on supporting abortion rights, and she won by 11 points in a true 50-50 state. And of course, the midterms, which happened in the aftermath of Dobbs, were a bloodbath for Republicans who failed to flip the Senate, and their big uh, red wave in the House devolved into uh, a majority of only five seats. And meanwhile, even despite the obvious and universal support for abortion rights everywhere in the country, it is worth noting what Donald Trump is running on. I appointed over 300 federal judges and three great Supreme Court justices. And last year, those justices and you know exactly what they did. They ruled to end Roe v. Wade. And That's how far to the right the GOP base is, that if you want to have any chance at becoming the Republican nominee for president, you have to espouse support for arguably the most toxic issue that exists in politics. And don't forget, he's also on record prior to Dobbs saying this. Do you believe in punishment for abortion, yes or no, as a principle? Uh, the answer is that there has to be some form of punishment. For the woman? Yeah, there has to be some form. And that's something that has renewed significance now that Roe was overturned and what Trump said can absolutely turn into something more than an empty threat. So look, I'm not here to tell Republicans how to run their campaigns, but I am here to tell voters that they should be listening to what Republicans are saying and watching what they're doing. The fact that they witnessed the shellacking that they got the ballot box in 2022 and every subsequent election where abortion was a factor and are still plowing forward with this extreme agenda proves that this is not a party that feels accountable to voters. They don't care what people actually want. They are there to impose a theocratic agenda onto a population that isn't interested. It is governing in its most dangerous form. And the good news is that we keep stopping it, but it requires turning out every single time. Here's a preview of my interview with Alex Michelson. The rest of Donald Trump's party is trying their hardest to, to basically carry water for him by attacking Joe Biden. Uh, they're trying to get an impeachment inquiry off the ground in the House. Do you think that this helps or hurts the Republicans politically? Because we're talking about an impeachment inquiry that is, uh, to say it generously, not exactly on the level. Well, this all is about, I think most of this is about Donald Trump's ego. Right. I mean, if you've seen the reporting from Politico recently, the, the what they're saying is that Donald Trump is mad at Kevin McCarthy because he wants Kevin McCarthy to hold a vote 
to expunge his past impeachments. Which, by the way, isn't a thing. It is them pretending to themselves that the thing that happened didn't happen. Well, and there may not be the votes for that. <laughs> right. Because right, we know... 18, 18 Republicans who are currently sitting in Biden won districts. Right. And there are two Republicans that voted for the impeachment in the first place. And there's no evidence that they've changed their mind on that. And Republicans only have a four vote majority. So there may not be the votes to do that. It puts those Republicans in Biden districts in jeopardy. It makes life harder for them. Kevin McCarthy knows that. And by the way, if Donald Trump wants to be president, he needs to have a Republican House in order for him to govern and get his agenda through. But again, it goes back to that idea of win the minute. (laughs) So he'd like a headline that says impeachment expunge. So what could be the next best thing? Well, Biden got impeached, too. So now it's all it's all political. My po- impeachment was political. His impeachment is political. It's all BS. It, it doesn't matter. And so, it, you know, it's like the, the same thing they'll say whenever Trump talks about his stuff. Now it's the Biden crime family is, is his response. Right. Hunter Biden's just as bad as, as I am. And it's all false equivalents. You know, do, but Joe Biden had had classified documents. Look at the Corvette. You know, look at the cor- look at the garage. You know, so it, and that way it's all a wash. We're all bad because if it's if it's we're all bad. Trump's great at right. that because he's, you know, <laughs> right. He's, he's not trying dominant. to make himself good, but if he can make everybody else bad, if he can, if he can kind of sully the field for everybody, yeah. then at least he can stand out. At least he has some plausible deniability. He's best when he can say the whole system is rigged. They're all against you. Everybody's an asshole, but I'm your asshole. Yeah. And I'm on your side and you need a motherfucker like me to take everybody else on because the system is so bad and so swampy and so full of shit that unless you have an advocate like me, you're never going to win because they got every lobbyist, they got the deep state, they got the media, they got everybody behind them. And so you need a fighter like no other to take them on. And that is why Donald Trump is successful in the Republican Party, because they see him as that. It's not about policy. It's not about in the weeds. They feel like he is a fighter for them and the most alpha fighter of them all, and he makes the rest of them look like pussies. Yeah, and by the way, they're doing themselves no favors to basically to turn that thought on its head because they're all kowtowing to him. I mean, even totally everybody except Chris Christie is just too scared to throw even a, a slight punch. And and they're entrenching that very belief that he's the alpha, that they're all betas and, uh, and nothing's changing. But they're in a weird place because you look of at course. Chris Christie, who could not be articulating the case against Trump more, more beautifully, yeah. right? I mean, he, he, he is really, really good at doing that. And he's got zero shot at winning the Republican nomination. Right. Zero shot. You know, hit, hit the, the biggest hit he's going to do is on Pod Save America, which is interesting, you know, and great. And, and your listeners love them and, and all that. But that's not usually the place you go when you want to win over Republican voters. Right. John Lovett is not the guy that they're <laughs> looking for for the seal of approval. Right. Uh, and that says something that he needs to go there because Democratic donors are helping him get on the debate stage. To watch the full interview with Alex, click the thumbnail right here on the screen or check out the interviews playlist on my YouTube channel. You can also listen to the audio version of this episode by clicking that link on the screen. And of course, to see more of my content, the link to subscribe is here as well.